Hey kiddos, welcome back. We're continuing our discussion on acids and bases. At the end of the last video, we had defined what Arrhenius acids and bases were, and also Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. We even talked about conjugate acids and bases. Now there's one more definition that I want to just briefly give to you this year. We'll worry about it more next year in AP Chem, but these are called Lewis acids and Lewis bases. And we'll look down here in this table at our definitions of all three, and it says a Lewis acid is something called an electron pair acceptor, whatever that is, and a Lewis base is called an electron pair donor. Well, let me just give you one example for right now just to illustrate this to you. And like I said, we don't use this defini definition a whole lot in our honors class. We'll talk more about it next year in AP. Let's take um, ammonia, and I'm going to draw the Lewis structure for ammonia for you, NH3, and I'm going to put the non-bonding pair electrons on that nitrogen over here to the right. And let's react that with boron trifluoride. So that's BF3 kiddos. And boron trifluoride, um, the boron atom, um, is quite content with three pairs of electrons around that central atom boron. Um, it disobeys the octet rule. Well, it can actually accept a pair of electrons right there. It can make a bond with this nitrogen over here and that pair of electrons that that nitrogen has that are currently non-bonding. Now, since the ammonia molecule will donate the pair of electrons, to boron trifluoride, it will donate the pair of electrons, we would call it a Lewis base. Since the boron and boron trifluoride would accept that pair of electrons, we would call that a Lewis acid. So when these react, we form this molecule here. So we have NH3 on this side still. And remember, we've created a bond between the nitrogen and that boron, and the BF3 over here. So this is considered to be a Lewis acid-base reaction, where the BF3 accepted the pair, so it's considered to be my Lewis acid, and the ammonia, the NH3 molecule, donated a pair to create this bond right there. Now once again, we'll talk more about this next year. For right now, I just wanted to introduce the concept to you. Okay? All right, let's talk about some nomenclature. If you remember, at the beginning of the year, we learned how to write uh, names and formulas for ionic compounds, for covalent compounds, and for acids. Um, you might want to go back um, in your notes and review and your videos how to name and write formulas for acids. So there are two types of acids that we learned how to name and write formulas for binary and ternary acids. Binary acids have two elements in them, hydrogen bonded to a non-metal. Let me give you just a couple of quick examples. You might remember HBraq, remember binary acids exist when dissolved in water. Um, here we go, H2SAQ, and then everyone's favorite, HCl. AQ. Now, to name these, if you recall, we always begin binary acids with the prefix hydro. We'll change the ending of the nonmetal uh, to the suffix ic, and then we'll say acid at the end. So let's name these really quickly. Let's do HBr. We would say hydro, and then we're going to change the ending of the nonmetal to ic, so bromic and then we'll say acid. So HBr would be called hydrobromic acid. H2S, same thing. We'll start with hydro, and now we'll change the ending of sulfur to ic, but we'll add a little flair to it. It's actually sulfuric acid. So hydrosulfuric acid is the name for the acid H2S. And HCl, that's right, yeah, you're probably working ahead of me now, aren't you? Hydro chloric acid, and so on. Okay? 
Now, the other types of acids we learned how to name and write formulas for are called ternary acids. So ternary acids have hydrogen bonded to an oxygen-containing polyatomic ion. And these have become known also as oxy acids because along with hydrogen, we'll have a nonmetal and oxygen in there as well. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. Let's say I had HMNO4, um, H3PO3, H2SO4. Do you see how these are all hydrogen, hydrogen ions bonded to these oxygen-containing polyatomic ions? Let's put down a couple of more here. How about HNO2? HNO3, and let's throw one more in there, HC2H3O2. That'll keep us busy for just a little bit. And let's name and write formula, or let's name these guys, okay? So HMNO4, the oxygen-containing polyatomic is MNO4. Let's go to our polyatomic chart. Let's clear this page so it looks a little bit better here. And let's find MNO4. Negative one, there it is. It's called permanganate. So we change the ending, let's see, eight to an ic acid. So if you remember, eight radicals are polyatomics. If they're bonded to hydrogen, become <coughs> ic acids. So this should be called permanganic acid. And we do not start with the prefix hydro. Let's do H3PO3. Now, PO3 is 3 negative, so let's find that on our polyatomic chart. So, PO3, 3 negative, here it is. It's called phosphite. So, ite radicals, if you recall, become us, OUS acids. So, this is called phosphorus acid, not, phos not phosphite acid. We change the ending to OUS, so phosphorus acid. H2SO4, SO4 is 2 negative, so let's find it. Here's SO4, 2 negative, it's called sulfate. So the name of this acid would be called sulfuric acid. Not sulfic, we like to say sulfuric. All right, why don't you take a minute and try these three without my help, then come back to the video, and we'll see how you did. Alrighty, welcome back. So the next one, HNO2, so NO2 negative one. Here it is, that's called nitrite. So hopefully you wrote the name of this acid is nitrous acid. And then NO3 negative one, well that's right here, that's nitrate. So hopefully you wrote nitric acid. And then the last one I had you do we have the C2H3O2 negative one ion. So way at the top of your page here, C2H3O2 negative one, it's called acetate. So hopefully you called this acetic acid. Okie doke. All right, once again, um, you might want to go back and review uh, your videos on acid and base nomenclature way at the beginning of the year, okay? All right, one more thing I want to talk briefly about today are strengths of acids and bases. Um, not too long ago, we talked about the ability of a solution to conduct an electri uh, electric current. Those that conduct electricity the best, if you remember, were able to produce lots of ions when dissolved in water. Um, and as a result, we called them electrolytes because they could conduct electricity when those solutes produced lots of ions when dissolved in water. Well, what do you think about the electro electrical conductivity and what it can tell us about the number of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in acids and bases when dissolved in water? Yeah, probably if those acids and bases conduct electricity really well, if they're great electrolytes, they produce lots of hydrogen ions, if they're acids, or hydroxide ions, if they're bases. We call those strong acids and strong 
bases. Now, sometimes we'll put an acid or base in water, and they don't conduct electricity very well at all. And that's because they don't produce a lot of hydrogen or hydroxide ions. Since they don't produce very many of them, we call them weak acids or weak bases. So let's talk about acids first. Uh, it turns out a tenth of a molar hydrochloric acid solution conducts electricity really, really well. However, a tenth of a molar acetic acid is a very, very poor conductor of electricity. So HCl produces more ions in solution than acetic acid. So let me write that reaction for you. If I have HCl and I dissolve it in water, it turns out that water gains that proton. Okay, it accepts a proton, so water is acting as a base, and the HCl loses that proton and becomes Cl negative, and so it's acting as my acid. It does that so well, notice I have the arrow going in one direction. We say that this goes to completion. Almost all of the HCl molecules, when placed in water, will do what I just showed you. They will produce a bunch of hydronium ions, or hydrogen ions for short, and chloride ions. Since they produce so many of them, we call HCl a strong acid. Now, if we take a look at acetic acid, Hc2H3O2, and we react it with water, this hydrogen will be gained by water some of the time to produce the hydronium ion and acetate ions. This does not go to completion. Notice the arrow goes both ways. This reaches what we call an equilibrium before it reaches completion. So we call these acids that do not um, ionize 100% or to completion, we call the acids weak. Those that do ionize 100% um, of the time or have this completion process going on are strong acids. So, notice that HCl ionizes 100% of the time while acetic acid reaches an equilibrium. In other words, it does not ionize 100% of the time. Acids that ionize completely or 100% of the time, as I've said, are considered strong acids. Because they produce the maximum number of ions, they are great conductors of electricity. Acids that don't do this are called weak acids. Now, there are only six strong acids. That's it. Only six of them. You need to learn these six. And you might say, well, why is Hummer making me learn these six strong acids? Well, I want you to know if any acid is strong or weak. And my idea is, is that if you learn the six strong acids, all other acids would be considered to be weak. So let's take a minute and write down the reactions for these strong acids reacting with water. This first acid, HClO4, is called perchloric acid. When it reacts with water, 100% of the time, these uh, perchloric acid hydrogen ions are accepted by water to produce the hydronium and chlorate ions. Now we can sort of write an abbreviated reaction here. We're going to cheat just a little bit. If I cross off water from this side of the equation and cheat just a little bit and get rid of water on this side of the reaction in the form of the H3O positive ions, don't I have H pluses left over? So we can write that reaction in an abbreviated format. HClO4 becomes H pluses and ClO4 negative ions. So this version is the abbreviated form of this version. Here, let me do another one for you. HI, hydroiodic acid. That's another one of your six strong acids that you're going to have to learn the name and formula for. That hydrogen ion, 100% of the time, is accepted by water molecules to form the hydronium ion and I negatives. If I get rid of water here and the water part of the hydronium ion, I'll have H plus is left over. I will end up with HI forming H plus and I negative. Here, you try it for number three. This is called hydrobromic acid. It's another one of your strong acids. 
its hydrogen ions accepted 100% of the time when added to water to form the hydronium and bromide ion. So take a minute and see if you can write the abbreviated equation for the ionization of hydrobromic acid in water. Pause the video and try it now. All right, welcome back. Did you put HBr with the arrow going one way becomes H pluses and Br negatives? If you did, good job. Let me do the next one for you, and then I'll have you do the last two on your own. HCl, hydrochloric acid, is another one of your strong acids. This hydrogen ion is accepted 100% of the time by the water molecule to form hydronium ions and chloride ions. The abbreviated version would be HCl becomes H plus and Cl negatives. H2SO4, sulfuric acid, when added to water, will form hydronium and hydrogen sulfate ions. Now, the abbreviated way to write that would be H2SO4 becomes H pluses and HSO4 negative ions. All right, you do number six on your own. Nitric acid, the last of your six strong acids. Write both the long version products and go ahead and write the short version for me. Pause the video and try it now. All right, welcome back. Did you draw hydronium ions on the product side and nitrate ions also on the product side? And in the abbreviated form, you got rid of the water molecules on both sides. And you ended up with HNO3 makes H plus and NO3 negative. Now, these six acids are the only strong acids. All other acids are weak. So you must learn the six strong acids. So I'm going to go through them one more time for you. Perchloric acid, hydroiodic acid, hydrobromic acid, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. Take the time tonight to learn those. Don't wait until the morning of your exam. All right? Okay, that's good enough for today. We'll see you soon, kiddos. Bye-bye.